Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. Today we're going to learn a bit about how to keep butterflies. Okay, it's not true at all, but this will come into play in the video. A couple months ago, for folks who watch my channel, you saw that I picked up a couple H. Maxima Huntsman spiders, and there's no other way to call it. We were ill-prepared for them when we went to do the rehousing, and it resulted in a rather messy transfer of the spiders from their shipping vials into their enclosures. It got so bad that one of them managed to jump up my arm, around my back, and poor Billy had to try to find it in the folds of my shirt, which, quite frankly, was brown and allowed the spider to camouflage very well. And she didn't have her glasses on. It could have been a disaster. Luckily, Billy saved the day, found the spider. And even more luckily for me, the second spider we went to rehouse just literally leapt from its enclo uh, old enclosure, shipping enclosure, into the new enclosure. Because had it missed it, it probably would have ended up up my arm again, and we'd have had to do the same song and dance again. So the point here in the videos of Tom's Big Spiders for the rehousings in particular is to show people that it doesn't have to be stressful, and to show them some tips and tricks to make sure that the spiders get from point A to point B with minimal hassle. We really pride ourselves on not having a lot of those debacle rehousing videos. So in this one here, I just got a box in from Arisa's Spider Shop. I have become enamored with the Huntsman spiders now, and I've been trying to track down as many species as I can find. I think part of it is the fact that I found something that uh, definitely presents a new learning curve for me. But we have made some preparations going into this one. I heard from several people who keep the faster true spiders, and they gave me some tips. My buddy Mel emailed, big lengthy email, telling me some tips that I could use. And one of them involves this little bad boy over here. So we're going to go ahead and rehouse those and hope it goes much better this time while pointing out some of the tips that I've learned since that last rehousing. So enough of me talking. Let's get into this unboxing and check out some new Huntsman spiders. All right, so we just got another box in that I'm super excited about, except I'm also a little bit worried because uh, like the last box we got in with the Formictivus species, this one was stuck in the mail for an extra day. We have been shipping through FedEx, and unfortunately, they seem to be experiencing some difficulty. So in the last week, I've had two packages arrive a day late. And unfortunately, the spiders in this one are a bit less hardy than the Formictibus species. So we're going to go ahead now and open this box up. I'm just hoping it's not going to be a box full of dead spiders. Been there, done that. But let's get this open, see how they are. Now, I will say this box is from Arisa Spider Shop. The last time I ordered from them, they were packed well. And luckily, the weather wasn't particularly bad as we were shipping. So I'm hoping that they did okay. It was uh, got a little cold this morning. Somebody's going to comment on me not having a sharp knife. Always happens. But anyway, open it up. Here we go. Obviously, this one is from Arisa Spider Shop. This is my second order from them. First one went well, and they tend to get a lot of cool species in. And the ones I've been looking for lately, they've had quite a few of them in stock. Hopefully, they're okay because I noticed that they're also sold out now. Heat pack is still warm. Awesome. Okay, I was a little worried about that. The heat pack is warm, well wrapped, so it didn't fry any of the spiders, and that's good because, again, it did get a little chilly this morning. So now the moment of truth as we're going to go ahead and open this up and see what's going on with the spiders. Very, very well packed, and it feels just warm enough that I'm actually feeling pretty confident that they're going to be fine. And let's see what we got here. All right, some more packing paper. Very well packed. This is the thing, a good pack job. You really don't have to worry about them getting lost in the mail. So here is the first one. Oh, oh no, here we go. Here's the first one. So this one's a little big. This is Heteropodra tetrica black. Really excited about that. Should be a big one. And we're just going to check and make sure there's nothing else in here. Always check your boxes just in case before you put them outside in the garage. I've heard some terrible stories of people ordering spiders, getting a spider that they didn't expect to get, taking the box, putting it out in the garage, and then next thing you know, it discovering later on that there was a live spider in it that they didn't notice. So always check the boxes just in case. But let's get this one open here so I can show off the other spiders we got coming and try not to cut my thumb off in the, whoop, in the process. All right, so let's pop this bad boy open and see what we have here. Oh, yeah, here we go. All right, so let's open this one up. Oh, right off the bat. So the first one we have here. Oh, looking. Ooh, there you go, Billy. Nice big one. Holoconia mariensis, an Australian species of huntsman spider. Very excited to pick that one up. And I've been on a huge huntsman spider kick lately. I've been basically shopping online trying to find all the species I can find. Here we have, you see it in there, little guy, Heteropoda venatoria. 
And this next one here will be another H Venatoria. And oh, oh, and this one appears to have molted in transit. If we can get see that in there, the molten spider seems okay. So this one went through probably, you know, an extra day in the mail and molted, which is a little scary, but they're packed well. It, they seem to be in good shape, which is excellent. Because again, when I found out these were delayed, I was freaking out a bit because although some tarantula species, they are used to experiencing some lower temperatures. I have heard that some of the huntsman species can be a little more finicky and that kind of freaks me out. So as far as rehousing this time, we're going to switch things up a little bit. Last time I got huntsman spiders, I was, I'll just say it, I was ill prepared for the rehouse and it, luckily Billy kind of saved the day by catching one that got out and on me and the second one kind of jumped into its enclosure and was fine. But this time around, we're going to do something different. So first of all, we have here, instead of opening the tops, I've drilled a little hole in the top of the enclosure and I'm covering it with tape. I've been using it with the other ones. So instead of having to open the top of the enclosure where they like to bolt to the top, that will allow me to open that little tab, drop a prey item in, close it and keep the spider contained. Also, one of the other things that was mentioned, my buddy Mel contacted me afterwards and said that the upside down AMAC boxes are a better alternative for some of them because they tend to shoot up when disturbed. So that allows you to kind of open the bottom, feed them in that way, which will again, permit uh, prohibit them from escaping so what we're going to do here is probably take these and plant them right into the substrate we'll pop the little tops off maybe snip that there take it off pull the stuff out leave it in there they'll be perfectly fine that will allow them to come out on their own and will keep me from trying to fiddle with little tiny spiders that could escape and possibly get away and here's another addition we have. This here is a butterfly enclosure. Again, my buddy, I was thinking about getting one of these before and she kind of cinched it, said to pick one of these up. This will help contain the spiders should they actually bolt out. Last time we had an issue where the spider got on me, it could have jumped off the table. It would have been completely lost in this room, but here we can put the spiders down in there. If they bolt, they're gonna climb around these walls. They most likely will not come out and then I can use the walls to kind of catch them. So. Hopefully this will make things a lot safer as we do the rehousings. Again, the video probably won't be as good, but that's not what it's about here in Thomas Big Spiders. It's about making sure that the spiders get into their enclosures safely. They don't get out and about. Billy doesn't have to go through an incredibly stressful situation trying to find them. And we got a bigger one here that uh, Billy's already given me a look for that we probably don't want out on me. So next we'll go ahead and set these up and do some rehousings. So here's what we are going to do. We have the little vials there, I think the centrifuge vials, and there's a little hinge there. We're going to cut that right off so we can get the cap right out of the way. And then we're going to do that for these. And again, we're probably not going to catch footage of them out and about, but I will do what I will do later on is when we go to feed them or I catch them out, we'll get some footage of them afterwards. And I will try to flash up some pictures of what these guys look like as adults. Somebody mentioned that in one of the other videos, and I don't do it sometimes because I don't know, for species, I don't know what they're going to grow up looking like. I don't put it up. Plus, I feel like I should probably contact whoever I steal an image from. So what we're going to do is pl plant this right in here with my big, fat fingers. We'll plant that one in there. This is the one that molted, right? Yeah, that one's going to be okay. my fat fingers we'll get that one right in there and again it doesn't hurt to leave those in there i will probably i'd like to tell you i'm going to take them out later but these guys are so fast that if i take the top out and try to pluck one of those out later i'm going to end up with a spider out so we'll probably leave those in there for a while this looks a little there we go yeah of course it puddles up i mixed this stuff so on this we have the other venatoria who is right there and already doing some boogieing i'm good yeah the deep sigh. <laughs> All right, so what we are going to do now, you probably won't be able, you might be able to see some of it from the side here. I'm going to get these in. I want to walk around yeah. the other maybe, side maybe. of me. If you want to go from over my shoulder here, you should be okay. But what we're going to do is try to pull this out. Okay, should come real easy. The 
it's still in there can't see if it's uh, all right yep it's down in there Oop. one down that was so much easier knock on wood all right so all I'm doing is taking the little plugs and pulling them out of here and I didn't plant that one enough You see it in there? In there. Not the best lag. Pull one of these down. There we go. Two. See, this is already, I promised Billy this would go easier this time. It's not done yet. Knock on wood. And let's shove that in there. It in there. Oh. There it is. Three. <clears throat> All right. We're going to try this one. If I don't think I can do this one well on camera, we'll pause it. You know, I just realized I did like a total dingus. I pushed those things in there and I didn't label the, the containers yet. So you have no idea what they are? Well, no, I can, I can figure, there's only, there's two that are this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Surprise. Blah, just kidding. No, you, just. Now the other thing people were talking about is laying them down and doing it sideways. I'm going to try to peek to see. Yeah, that's a great idea. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you can just see the... <laughs> oh, boy. I think it's going to face like the camera. I think we need a, <laughs> think we need a bigger boat. Um, plant that well, this, one, this will work. Yeah, <laughs> plant this one too. Uh, I can't really plant it though because it's it's got to come out. Hmm. Get this tape down. Hmm. Eh. If we should just let it come out on its own. There's a pain in the booty. The thing is, normally I would just reach in here and pull these up. I can picture it shooting right up the tongs. Let's do it this way. People that didn't see the original video are probably like, why are they being so cautious? People that did see the original video are waiting for this thing to come flying out of here. I wonder if I can get it to go underneath. You can't come at the bottom, right? Yes, it can. Oh, well, great. no, I've got the I've got the thing here. I'm gonna try to do. Hope you can see if it comes out. No, it's getting there. I think it's in. No, oh, yes, it is. Yeah, it's right there. And you got to go in there the rest of the way.
Is it still caught on? No, I think it's actually, it just went under, under the cork bark, I think. All right. Boom. Woo! Ha <laughs> ha! Pulled it off. All right, we'll get it under the light here so people can get a good look at this one here. That is a good sized huntsman. Wow, they are just, I am just absolutely fascinated with these now, which is why I've been trying to track down as many that as I can. That one was really calm. Yeah, that one's actually pretty laid back. I mean, they, I'm sure once they put some size on, I mean, obviously the speed's still there. But I found with most things, once they get a little size on them, they start to calm down a little bit. As babies, they need to fly and get the heck out of there when something comes near them. So we'll see. I'm not underestimating them again. So this worked out great. wasn't needed. So we did learn some valuable lessons from the last time. I actually did, if anybody listens to my podcast, did a whole podcast where we broke down where I went wrong when I was rehousing the last ones, the H Maximas that I got. And actually, I will grab one of the H Maximas here. So people can see how big those got. And there's one of the H Maximus. Put it right under the light here. Putting on quite a bit of size. The other one's in pre-molt right now. So four different species of Huntsman now. I will probably be on the lookout for more because there isn't enough stress in my life. I need to add more with the rehousings. There's not enough stress in Billy's life, but there they all are lined up. We will obviously break some of these. I bought a bunch of these. We'll break out for these guys later. This one here, I probably could have put, I had a one gallon mainstay container that I was going to use for it. And I probably should use that, but we'll see how it goes. And molds in here a couple times, we'll get it into the mainstay container. But there we go. Three species of Huntsman spiders rehoused without anything getting on my back or getting out and without Billy having a heart attack. So I would say that's a success. Yay! And as promised, here is some footage after they've been rehoused. And in this case, after this one has been fed, this is the Heteropoda Tetrica Black. I dropped in a medium size Red Runner Roach and she was on it so quickly that I barely even got the enclosure shut. I love watching these guys hunt. They are so, so fast. She snatched it up off the ground and was back on that piece of cork bark in a blink of an eye. And over here we have the Halconia marianensis who is nice and plump, and I got a funny feeling, is probably in pre-molt, and she's actually, it looks like she's grooming herself there, which is awesome. Can't wait to grow this one up. I did drop in a little roach for her, and she didn't eat it, so I had to take that roach out. That was a lot of fun trying to do that without her escaping. But as you can see here, just a gorgeous spider. This one's probably pushing about an inch and three quarters now. I just love the leggy looks of them. And again, unlike tarantulas, they often wait till the prey is right in front of them. These guys will spring down, they recognize it, they see it, and then they will spring down, grab the prey at them, and spring right back up to where they were in a blink of an eye. It's just really a sight to behold. So hopefully I'll get more footage of these guys feeding in the future. So again, one tip that I forgot to mention in there, but I mentioned in the beginning of the video, is the fact that you want to wear tight clothing and preferably tight clothing of a light color. So white, for example, a nice tight white t-shirt or something, because if the spider does get out and get on you, it'll be very easy for you to quickly identify where the spider is. I did wear a black t-shirt in this one, but I did not wear my normal rehousing gear, which is that brown shirt. We put that away because that had too many folds and wrinkles in it that could easily conceal a tiny hiding spider. So that that's an important one to consider as well. Now for folks that are just keeping tarantulas, because I know that's kind of our bread and butter on here, I would say that this here would be a nice little setup for moving any type of fast spiderling or tarantula species. So anything that you're worried about getting out on your dinner table or getting out and about, I don't think I would so much use it for adults because with an adult, the adult gets out in here, your hands are in there, that's still a very enclosed space that could trigger some defensive behavior. But for little spiderlings, yes, definitely, I think this would be something that if you stuck on your dinner table and you were doing your rehousings, it gives you that peace of mind to know that the spider isn't going to go anywhere except inside here. Basically, you let it run around when it tires out because they do have that spider speed where they can go very quickly for a little 
little bit and then those book lungs can't keep up and they tire out and have to relax, that's when you go ahead and cup them. So this could be something that anybody uses. But for those of you looking to keep some of the faster species of spiders, like the wandering spiders or the huntsman, this would be a great place to start. And I will be hoping to get more of them in the future. As far as husbandry videos, we will see how these go. I know a lot of folks want me to do husbandry videos and talk about how I care for some of the other species that aren't tarantulas in my collection. But for me, I feel like I need to raise them to adulthood before I'm able to speak on that. Plus with animals that I'm just starting to keep like the huntsman, this is new for me. So I don't want to ever put anything out there that could be contradictory to them getting good care. I want to make sure I know what I'm talking about before I make a video about it. So look forward to some of those in the future. We are are starting to amp up with true spiders here. It's become a new kind of fascination for me. We're not getting away from tarantulas. We're just kind of broadening it out. Remember, it's Tom's Big Spiders, not Tom's Big Tarantulas. So don't freak out if I start showing off some spiders on here. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate it. You can click that little circle right up there. If you'd like to check out more videos, see what I'm about, you'll find them over here. If you comment, I will respond back. Could take me a little while. Right now, it's taking me anywhere from a couple days to a week, only because I've been very, very busy. But know that if you leave a comment, I will reply to you. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll catch you all next time.